Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, dudes, dudettes, hello. Hello today at the 22nd of April 2021. My name is Sergei Baklukov and you're watching Baklukov Live. An amazing IRL live streams every frigging day. You hear me? Every frigging day. So I'm beginning another one here in St. Petersburg, Russia. We are now in a so-called Kirovsky, Kirovsky district, municipal district, which is called Avtova, also known as the area of uh, Kirov plants, Kirovsky Zavod, Kirovsky factory. And uh, this is really a great place from the point of view of the history, because this is actually a uh, citadel of uh, the uh, Russian Revolution of 1917. And now, while we will making a walking tour, exploring the streets, the uh, neighborhood, um, I will tell you. Well, today we will walk all the way through the main streets of uh, Kirovsky district. It is called Prospect Stachek, Strikes Avenue. Yes, here it's, uh, li it literally means the strikes of the workers because here the workers were making the strikes okay so let's get it started the strikes avenue the local time 703 people are getting back home from work and this is the entrance to Aftava Aftava metro station this is one of the very first metro stations of St. Petersburg opened in November 1955. And by the way, exactly here uh, came the very first, the very first Leningrad, well, St. Petersburg back then in the Soviet years, Leningrad uh, train, metro train. It was in November 1955. Yes, uh, this is uh, the great metro station in all the best traditions of uh, the uh, Stalinist empire, Stalinist neoclassicism, in uh, the architecture of uh, the metro stations. You know, even the Guardian, I say even because like it's a, it's a foreign, it's a foreign rate. It's not like it's biased, but it's, uh, so it must be unbiased. It must be considered as unbiased in terms of Russia, was considered uh, as like uh, one of the best stations in the world. Yes, well, I could get, I could go there inside, but look, you remember uh, in the winter time I was making the uh, live streams from all the stations of uh, St. Petersburg Metro, so uh, we will not do that now. Today it's not just, it's just not our subject, okay? So let's go. Now we will go in direction of um, Kirovsky Zavod, Kirov Plans, and uh, uh, Narva Triumphal Arch. Narva Triumphal Arch. Yet, like uh, 150 years ago, here was nothing. It wasn't even the outskirts of the city. It was behind the city. Kirovsky Zavod, Kirov plant. It's one of the oldest. One of the oldest and one of the biggest. <laughs> Uh, factories or how to say plants in uh, as in Russian Empire as was in the Soviet Union as nowadays in a modern Russia here of plants it was founded yes in 1801 but then in 1860s it was uh, purchased by Nikolai Putilov Russian mathematic and engineer so he purchased that and uh, until the Soviet days it was known as Putilovsky like Putilovs 
for tulips plants. Well, you have no idea what they were making there and machinery and artillery and the railways. Uh, now they are making the tractors. Let's say in 1987 they are produced 23,000 tractors. 23,000. Okay, also they were making the tanks in 1930s. 1940s tank KV KV and uh, still now you know they're making the tractors they're making turbines for icebreakers they are making the harvesters So initially the area was developed as uh, the place to live for the workers of uh, Kirov plants, back then Putilovsky plants. But nowadays, look, the uh, area got starting from 1920s, 1930s and uh, developed until the end of 1950s. That's why from the point of view of architecture, here is in this part. 1950s Stalinist neoclassical architecture and uh, they are closer to the historic city center there's constructivism 1930s constructivism Well, as you know, I love Stalinist architecture. I see you guys keep joining. Yes, keep joining this live stream because it's another great live stream. The weather is okay today, not as it was several days ago, but, uh, but you know, when it's cloudy, there's an advantage too, that when it's cloudy, it's uh, better for the shadows, for the shadows, for the lighting. Uh, this lighting is much better than, let's say, the lighting when there's the sun because uh, one of what because like uh, one-third of uh, the side around uh, it's not okay if uh, you appear in front of the Sun or even from the side of the Sun so you're kind of limited well it's always good when the Sun is behind you and uh, it's like lighting your way but you never know Okay, now going in direction of uh, Kirovsky Zavod, also in direction of uh, Komsomolsk Ploshit, Komsomol Square, Komsomol, it's like a committee of uh, uh, Soviet youth, yes, there was such a huge movement, the committee of Soviet youth.
the Stalinist architecture, 1950s, a lot of fretwork, columns, big apartments, big rooms with the thick walls and high ceilings. Let's get inside of one of the uh, one of the yards. Let's make a deep inside. We need to make a big uh, deep inside. From the side of the yard it's a little bit more minimalistic but it makes sense there's uh, the school or kindergarten well everything is typical from this point of view it's typical for soviet union that uh, every area every certain amount of uh, the residential buildings having a school and a kindergartens uh, in the Soviet Union, especially back in 1950s, 60s, 70s, they wanted the school. They were making sure that the school is available, the school and kindergarten available in a really close distance. Well, I was living, I was living like that when I was a schoolboy. Uh, it was taking only two minutes for me to get to the school because the school was just in two buildings from where I lived and uh, sometimes for 15 minutes break I even had time to uh, come home uh, drink a uh, tea there and to get back for 15 minutes so it's like four minutes for the road maybe even less three minutes and uh, yeah, like 10 minutes to be home to get a tea prepared by my grandma Okay, let's get back to the streets. Prospect Stachek Strikes Avenue. Okay, I keep going in the direction of Komsomolska Square. Komsomol, the committee of the Soviet youth.
Eagle Square. I'm really looking forward for when finally the leaves will appear on the trees. Hey, really waiting for that. Such a massive Soviet monument. Okay, from uh, Komsomol Square to Kom oh, like Komsomol Garden to Komsomol Square. I love such a circle intersection here. It's called Komsomol Square. So, uh, would you like to hang out here now? Would you like that? Well, this is another neighborhood, one of those where it's not too much changed since 1950s. Well, of course, except the cars, the modern cars and um, the signs, also billboards. But back in the Soviet days, there was billboards as well, but they... Uh, all were into uh, some kind of political, political information.
Da kommt so Mall Square. So dudes, I am putting you into the atmosphere of 1950s, the Leningrad 1950s. I hope you enjoy, because this is unique, this is unique. The Soviet Union. Welcome to the Soviet Union. You see, even the sun went up for a little bit. The sun is shining on the Soviet streets. I hope you enjoy. And this is now how closer and closer we are getting to Kirovsky Zavod. Well, at least like to its uh, central entrance, because Kirovsky Zavod, Kirov plant, it's huge. It's really huge. Uh, even nowadays, there works 7,000 people. If you will look at the map, you will see that it's like all the way from Prospect Stachuk, where we are now, and it's all the way to uh, the river. It's huge. It's huge.
there's the pellets of culture. The pellets of culture for the workers, initially for the workers of Kirov plant. In the Soviet Union, they were understanding that people have not only just to work, but also must have a laser. So there is a palace of culture. There is already the next metro station. Uh, it's next metro station from where we have started. We have started from Aftova. This is Kirovsky Zavod, Kirov plant. Also one of the very first metro stations in 1955. Uh, so we actually now going like uh, in direction of the red line the very first line of St. Petersburg Metro But just from the ground level We are from the ground level Also once this is one of the very first uh, Metro stations Projected in 1950s in a Stalinist era, it's pretty awesome. Again, columns, fretwork, mosaics inside. It's great. It's one of the greatest examples of uh, the Soviet architecture, of the Soviet metro architecture. Kirovsky Zavod, the red line, 1955. What you think? Hey, what you think? Гагарин, Юрий Гагарин. Окей, okay, let's keep walking. 
now we are going into the site of the next station, Narvske, where it's like it is Narva, Narva Triumphal Gate or Triumphal Arch. We keep walking Prospect Stachuk Strikes Avenue. And this area is actually a citadel of uh, the Great October Revolution of uh, 1917. I will tell you why. So there is... There is Kirovsky Zavods. And all there, it's really, really huge. If you will look at the map, you will see that it's huge, absolutely huge. So the factory was founded yet in 1801. In 18, 1860s, it was purchased by the uh, Nikolai Putilov, Russian engineer, uh, mathematic. And uh, since then it was known as uh, Putilovsky Zavod, Putilov's plants. But in the Soviet days it was renamed to uh, Kirovsky, named after Sergei Kirov, one of the most significant early Soviet Union politicians. So, uh, yet back in 1905, when yet here was the Russian Empire, when here was the Tsar, in January 1905, 1905, uh, there was fired four workers, four workers, and uh, they considered that it was not uh, not a fair. It was not fair. It was not fair. Like they uh, fired them for nothing, and uh, this was the beginning. So yes, they fired just four workers, and uh, I guess their colleagues. And now the workers decided to make the strike. And they made the strike in 1905. So, at the 9th of January, 1905, they went all the way to Palace, uh, Winter Palace, to the Tsar, that, uh, to give him some kind of petition. But uh, this protest was over with the fact that Many of them were killed, okay? And uh, this, this was the beginning of uh, so-called the first Russian Revolution of 1905-1907. It was driven mostly by the workers of Kirov plants. Then, 10 years after, in February 1917, everybody knows about the uh, Great October Revolution of 1917. But before that, there was also a huge revolution in February, which was like a prelude to the Great October Revolution of 1917, when the Emperor's authority completely fallen apart, fallen down. Okay? So, uh, and uh, in February 1917, here, next to the workers of uh, Kirov plant, uh, there was Vladimir Lenin. Vladimir Lenin, he was, uh, he had a meeting, he had a meeting with the workers. And uh, also he inspired the workers to keep fighting for their rights. You know, the rights of the workers the authority to the proletariat and so uh, actually just uh, 10 months after in October the uh, imperial authority was I would say yeah was kicked off so and everything everything was starting just here in January 1905. So you see, that's why sometimes it is important, important to localize 
or how to say to neutralize any kind of protests and meetings in the very beginning because you see uh, even just the fire of uh, four workers then can lead to the great revolution which has completely changed the movements of Russian history and as a matter of fact the history of the world or at least the Europe so still one of the uh, biggest it's one of the oldest and still one of the biggest plans in Russia now here they are making uh, the tractors harvesters turbines for uh, icebreakers and many other stuff also there they have a shipyards because <clears throat> the other end of uh, the uh, plant it's next to the river they have their own ferries there deep ferries industrial ferries so yeah that's one of the uh, biggest industrial and metallurgic machinery plants Kirovsky Zavod Kirovsky Zavod Kirov plant They also produced the tanks, uh, which tank KV, KV, in Russian KV, in Russian pronunciation KV, well, in English KV. And you know, in the years of World War II, a big part of uh, these plants was evacuated to Chelyabinsk, and they started to, uh, and they started producing the tanks and tractors in Chelyabinsk. So now Chelyabinsk even have a nickname nickname like Tanko Grat like a tank town or tank city so uh, the start of uh, that plant in Chelyabinsk happened because this one was evacuated from Leningrad to Urals to Chelyabinsk you know in 1987 they had a record they produced 23,000 more than 23,000 tractors for just one year there it's a part now we see a part of ZSD uh, ZSD западный скоростной диаметр it's a toll road western speed diameter it's a toll road inside of St. Petersburg if you watched my live stream on Sunday you remember I was driving this road and then from this road from this toll road I've got to another toll road which is which is called M11 or nickname Niva it's Moscow St. Petersburg or vice versa St. Petersburg Moscow and uh, uh, through M11 I'm pretty fast I got to Novgorod the Great the real first old capital of old Russia So the move of a butterfly in one part of the world can call the hurricane in another part of the world. 
So uh, everything, literally, everything started with the fire of uh, four workers of uh, Kirov plants. So at the 9th of January, 1905, they got to Tsar, to Winter Palace. And uh, there was started the mess. The mess, which is also known as Bloody Sunday. That was a Bloody Sunday. Yeah, Sunday. It was a day off. So they, uh, and then their, their day off, they got to Tsar. And unfortunately, met their resistance. Gagarin met the resistance of uh, the army. The guards. Now there will be a, the garden named after 9th of January. That was the beginning, the beginning of many, many strikes. The strikes of the workers. So that's why now this avenue, the main avenue of uh, Kirovsky district called Prospect Stachek, Strikes Avenue. Because, yeah, in all the puzzle, in all the historic puzzle of the Russian revolutions, the strikes was one of the uh, most important elements. So this is also Stalinist, but like a young Stalinist architecture. The end of 1940s. I think that the logic, the logic of Emperor back in those days, why he decided to shoot the workers was that he wanted to suppress it from the very beginning. He wanted to show like, you better never do that again. So he wanted like to be a, like to show that he's a strict, that he not gonna tolerate it. But, however, they never gave up, and the strikes kept going. That was the first Russian Revolution, 1905, 1906, 1907. We now will go all the way there to Narva Triumphal Arch. This is a part of an old road to Peterhof. Peterhof is a 18th century summer residence of uh, Peter the Great and royal family. And uh, Narva, Narva Triumphal Arch, it was an outpost. In the beginning of 19th century, that was an outpost of St. Petersburg on the south 
west of uh, St. Petersburg. Let's get to one more yard. Uh, traditionally, here is enough of uh, places to park the car because not many people are living in these residential buildings. There are residential buildings having only three, four, maximum five stories, big apartments, so not many apartments there. Not many people are living just like physically. Okay, uh, with my live streams, one of my goals you to feel the ambience and atmosphere. Oh, this is my bank, Tinkoff. I use Tinkoff, I mean. One of not many examples of uh, a uh, more modern architecture, which is here absolutely not in harmony. Not in harmony with the general architecture here.
the Stalinist residential buildings are not only five-storied buildings, sometimes it's nine-storied buildings, like that one. Also, you can see many, many residential buildings like this in Moscow. Okay, and here is that garden I told you about, the garden or a park named after 9th of January. Yes, it is exactly dedicated to the 9th of January, 1905, to so-called bloody, bloody Sunday, when the workers of uh, Kirov plants came to the Winter Palace with a petition to the emperor. Some kind of decent size. I'm sure this is one of the most popular places for the residents of Kirovsky district. And by the way, here lives 250,000 people. So it's like the, si the size of uh, uh, many Russian towns. I mean, like many Russian towns are uh, having the size like that. Let's say there's about same amount of people in Novgorod the Great. Nines of January Garden, but let's get back to the avenue. Going in direction of uh, the Narvske, Narvske metro station. Oh yes, Narvske. Why it's called Narva? Because Narva is actually Estonian, Estonian city or town, which is located right on the border of uh, Russia and Estonia. If you remember, last year I was in Ivan Gorod. Ivan Gorod. There is the river Narva and the Estonian town of Narva. And I was there in Ivan Gorod or Ivan Gorod's fortress, and uh, I saw, I saw the Estonian from there. And yeah, like I mean, if you go that. If you go that direction, many, many, many miles, you will get to Narva. You'll get to Narva. Peter Hof went all the way to Narva. Okay, this is like the last 500 meters of uh, Prospect Stachuk, the very beginning. There is the very beginning. And this part was developed uh, before that part was developed. Because look, the city was growing up from there. There's the historic city center, the Nevsky and everything. And it was growing there. So that's why there's here goes 1930s constructivism 
then 1940s, 1950s, and all the way to 1960s, there are Khrushchev's, uh, Brezhnev periods, residential buildings, and so and so. So here is constructivism, 1930s. Okay, this is a really great example of constructivism for you to understand this kind of architecture. 1930s, the end of 1920s, constructivism. Now here is the library. Look, in, uh, in order to understand <clears throat> the sense of uh, constructivism, again, we need to address the history. We need to imagine 1920s, 1930s in Russia and what it is. It's only 10, 15 years after the uh, great October Revolution. It's uh, the uh, very young years of uh, the Soviet Union. Back then, in uh, 18th, 19th century, in like all the emperor times, the times of Russian Empire, what was in trend, in trend of architecture and just everything? Classicism, Renaissance, Neo-Renaissance, uh, Baroque, Eclecticism, and so and so uh, but uh, when uh, there came the uh, Soviet days they felt like they have a new vision or at least they need they need a new vision and uh, definitely that vision have to be some kind of opposites of opposites and more utilitarian functional than it used to be in the uh, years of Russian Empire and look that's what's about constructivism says one of its founders it's the time when the arts don't have to be for the sake of art anymore the arts must be for the sake of production so it have to it, it must have um, how to say like it must be useful okay it must make sense, not just an art as an art, okay, just to be beautiful, okay, but uh, the arts in the sake of production and production for the sake of people. So it's like an art must serve, must serve to the people, okay. So that's why here, uh, this architecture, in their opinion, it have a lot of functional meaning. Like it's pretty strict, it's geometrical, and there is nothing that you waste. There's no any uh, uh, space that you waste. So it's utilitarian. So there was so-called so fabric kitchens, uh, the houses, communes, 
or how to say commune house and so and so uh, but look the thing is the thing is however why then in the end of 1940s 1950s they are however got back to classicism which they called neoclassicism Stalinist uh, architecture, Stalinist neoclassicism because however, however, however even though I mean I like I like uh, I like uh, constructivism as just constructivism however, however you need to understand that if you will have the architecture like this everywhere it's gonna be too brutal, okay? and uh, people, people I think that Stalin felt that people back in those days they was not too much ready for that so however they got back to all those classic forms colons which yet you know Greeks actually Greeks uh, invented many many centuries ago the fretwork but yeah here is in constructivism the whole philosophy the whole philosophy one of it the art not for the sake of art, but the art for the sake of production and production for the sake of people. The art which have to serve to the people. So now it may seem like too brutal, but look, what they were thinking about it is strict. It's geometrically right. And there's no any waste space. There's no space to waste. And uh, uh, the Soviet Union, Russia back then, Soviet Union, uh, it was not the only country which was into uh, constructivism. Let's say in 1930s in Finland there was Alvar Aalto and uh, they had some kind of their own constructivism which they called functionalism. And uh, guess what? Guess what? Let's say even in France, Eiffel Tower, for those days Eiffel Tower was also considered as some kind of constructivism or functionalism. Look, it's just kind of strict, geometrically right, equal construction. So, uh, if look at the Eiffel Tower, uh, how to say, in a philosophical way, it's constructivism. Well, it's Kirovsky district. It's named after Sergei Kirov, one of the most significant politicians in the early Soviet days. And of course, in such a district, here is definitely have to be the square named after Sergei Kirov and a huge monument, full height, full height monument to Sergei Kirov. Here it is.
Sergey Kirov. So today again we are getting an early Soviet Union flavor. Okay, final stretch to Narva, Narva Triumphal Arch. 150 years ago, that was the uh, outpost of St. Petersburg on the southwest of this city. That's where was the border. Look at these constructivist residential buildings. Last year, in 2020, if you remember, during my uh, trip, during my road trip, we went to the town of Ivanovo, or should I say Ivanovo, well, in Russian manner, it's Ivanovo, but maybe in English pronunciation, Ivanovo. And that turned to be uh, the real preserve of uh, the architecture, of the constructivist architecture. It seems like back then, back then, the Soviet government, to all those uh, constructivist architects, they decided to give Ivanova as some kind of sandbox for them to play with this kind of architecture. So there's really, there's a lot of, a lot of, a lot of buildings 
in the style of constructivism. constructivism strictness geometrism functionality But it's not, it's Stalinist neoclassicism. This is constructivism.
bay windows. In Russian language we call this Erkers. But it's not it's definitely not a Russian word. Erker. Bay windows. historic parts of uh, Prospect Statue Strikes Avenue of uh, Kirovsky District of St. Petersburg, the citadel of the uh, Russian Revolution. Here was the department store in a style of constructivism. Still it is, but now just called Mall. Mall. Narva, Narva Triumphal Arch, or we literally call it Gate. Narva Triumphal Gate. Narvskie Triumphalne Varota. Look, starting from there, there's already goes the historic St. Petersburg, okay? Um, but back then it was an outpost of St. Petersburg on a southwestern border of the city. It was the old Peterhof Rose. Still now, if you will want to go to Peterhof uh, by car, you can actually go all the way there uh, through Prospect Stachik and you will get to Petergovske Chasse, Petergov Highway, okay, and uh, there's uh, Narvska metro station, it's also red line, the very first line of St. Petersburg metro that was founded, constructed in 1955, and here is one more example of uh, constructivism, the House of Culture, Palace of Culture, it's active, the creative life goes there all the time, the performances, the concerts, I think I'm gonna get you there one day. That's a huge artwork. Proletarii всех стран соединяйтесь. The proletaries of all countries get united
constructivism another constructivism there Okay, and here is Narva Triumphal Arch. It's the middle of 18th century. Narska, 1955. Another great example of uh, Stalinist architecture, of Stalinist metro architecture. Joseph Rabavitsky, thank you, Sergey, for another superb tutorial. Thank you, Joseph. Joseph, I really want my content to be uh, not only entertaining, but sometimes educational. By the way, tomorrow is a Friday, right? Yeah, on Fridays will be more entertaining, more easygoing, but today is still Thursday. And uh, so I want it to be educational. Narvske, Narva. Yes, Narva, a town in Estonia on a border of uh, Russian Estonian border. Uh, only Narva, it's also the uh, name of the river, which is literally, which is literally right in between of us in between of Russia and Estonia the town of Narva and the town of Ivan Gorod or Ivan Gorod, Ivan Gorod a 
there's already the historic city center. If you will keep going there, there you will get to um, uh, uh, Avodny Canal, bypass canal, and there you will get to Kolomna, Kolomna district, Admiralty district. Um, Prospect Stachek, Strikes Avenue, Kirovsky District. It's really full of history. It's interesting. It's really interesting. It used to be in the uh, southwestern outpost of the city back in the uh, 17th, 18th century. And this is uh, the place where was founded the oldest and still the biggest plant in the citadel of Russian Revolution and the place where you can find uh, an old architecture, classic architecture, constructivism, and uh, neoclassicism. The oldest metro stations are here. Yeah, look, as I told you, it's uh, 200, about 250,000 uh, people are living here. So this is the size, the size of uh, many just a standalone Russian towns. In Russia, 1,150 cities and towns. Some more of constructivism. It looks a bit like the Hotel Bashkortostan in Ofa, in my hometown of Ofa. Yes, which is exactly all also was built in 1930s. The intersection of uh, wow, damn, crazy girl. Uh, so uh, the corner of uh, Stara Petergovsky and Old Peterhof Avenue and uh, Strikes Avenue, Prospect Stachek.
and uh, there you definitely already can recognize more typical for the historic city center residential buildings architecture Прекрасно. Прекрасно. Окей, okay, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, dudes, dudettes. My name is Sergey Baklikov and uh, it's time to finish this live stream because uh, I went all the way, starting from Avtovo metro station to Narskaya metro station and uh, we definitely explored all the uh, main history of uh, this district, Kirovsky district the citadel of uh, Russian revolution yes the revolution happens not only um, how to say particularly in a winter palace but the warm if I can say so the warm of it was here See you tomorrow. In the end, traditional panorama. Thank you for watching. Matilda Armonia, Julian G, Ashv 06, Neil McDonald. Mikhail Bensman, Team Tash, Reg Thibs, Marisa Vorobyova, Crystal, Shirley Farthing.